Jesus Christ. Squad is the most popular tactical shooter currently available. Very nice. If of course we're measuring popularity by the numbers. And I wouldn't be a pseudo games journalist if I didn't have Steam charts permanently running live on my second monitor. I find these numbers shocking, considering Squad has one of the most polarizing weapon systems in all of first person shooter gaming, as well as a Reddit page and YouTube comment section that takes every opportunity to flame the game into the ground. In fact, when Squad introduced this system, the Infantry Combat Overhaul, the reviews were worse than that one time I dared to enjoy a mod. This is the noodle arm dichotomy of Squad, a game that people love to flame, but also love to play, but also can't wait to never play ever again. But how did we get here? Where are we going? And was it worth it? <laughs> no. Tumultuous has two definitions. The first is making an uproar or loud, confused noise. Shleboykin! That was pretty tumultuous. But in relation to Squad's tumultuous state, I use the second definition. Tumultuous, excited, confused, or disorderly. For example, a tumultuous rabble of worthless Squad teammates that are always my teammates every single round. I believe confused says it best. One patch I'm playing Squad and it's near enough an arcade shooter. The next patch, I can barely aim my weapon. One patch later, rocket launchers have had their arming distances halved. Another patch, machine gun accuracy is greatly improved. Another patch, all weapon handling is improved. And before you know it, we're all the way back to the first patch. So not to be too melodramatic, but what the bloody Nora is going on? To understand squad, you need to understand pre-squad. That's right, there was a time before time. The UK was still in the EU. The great market crash had yet to occur. The Dark Knight had yet to be released. The American office airs its first ever episode. Madagascar 1 and Star Wars Episode 3 have just come out. Lance Armstrong wins his seventh and final Tour de France, and no one yet knows it was with the help of drugs. That's right, the year is 2005, and the game Project Reality is released. Project Reality is a mod for Battlefield 2, designed to create a more realistic Battlefield 2 experience. What the devs failed to realize at the time was that they had inadvertently created the single best large-scale tactical shooter to ever be created. A realistic shooter that sat somewhere between Battlefield and Armour. A glorious middle ground that allowed for a relatively accessible and fluid team-based experience without the need to take a two-month course in orienteering and team leading to understand. But fast forward a few years and Project Reality has two problems. One, the graphics leave a lot to be desired. It looks like something you might feel disappointed to boot up on the PS1. And two, it's free. Not necessarily a bad thing for the people playing it, but not great for the developers who will never be able to elevate Project Reality to anything more than a passion project. These are two issues that the devs of the time were acutely aware of, but they were also aware of the distinct Project Reality magic they were sitting on. On the 10th of October 2014, lead dev Sniper Dog, well, would you look at that, made a blog post announcing the spiritual future of Project Reality. Squad. You get it? He's a dog. Squad will be a tactical military game built from the ground up as a cooperative shooter, where high levels of teamwork and communication are supported, encouraged, and integral to gameplay. Complementary with that focus, we are seeking to bridge the gap between arcade shooters like the Call of Duty and Battlefield series and military simulations like Armour. My god, it sounds perfect. There's just one caveat. Squad will be commercial. That's pretty terrifying. But you know what isn't terrifying? This video's sponsor, my girlfriend. This is Belle. She's a 24-year-old up-and-coming musical theater actress from Argentina. She's already done musical theater all over the world and has just secured a spot on a highly selective, incredibly competitive two-year musical theater university course in London. There's just one problem. It costs 20,000 pounds a year. She set up a GoFundMe page that she doesn't want you to know about, but I want you to know about it. So I've made this ad to tell you about it. Belle, if you see this, I'm very sorry. For anyone who's ever asked how they can support the channel, the best thing you could do for the continued growth and longevity of the YouTube dream is to send a few spare bucks Bell's way. Nothing makes me happier than her being happy, and that's the sappy truth. There are links in the description and the pinned comment. Do feel free to go check it out. Thanks very much, and back to the video. Now where were we? Oh yeah.
Our goal from the very start has been to have a commercial game studio with both full-time and freelance developers who are able to make assets and be compensated for their effort. By helping to support developers financially using the game's revenue, we believe we will be able to take the scope and quality of the game to a more serious level. What these devs didn't know at the time was that they were following the advice of a dog and also that these two goals would ultimately become the warring factions that would go on to create the tumultuous squad we know today. But I'm getting ahead of myself. With this blog post, Squad drops its first video, pre-alpha footage. Majestic. Many highly intelligent memers in the comments will likely already be writing some kind of unironically better gunplay than Squad Now comment. And to you I say, I encourage such behavior and thank you for your comment. As an avid PR player, I have to say, this gunplay is shockingly, weirdly close to the PR experience. It's strange to see how the game started and where it ended up. And maybe it's time to talk about where it ended up. You see, Squad went through a number of iterations from this pre-alpha to the squad you can play right now. And it's in these iterations that Squad's true tumultuousness was born. Squad wouldn't be released in a 1.0 purchasable on Steam state until September 2020. And from update 1.0 to update 5.1.1, three further years of squad development would look like this. Love it or hate it, and I was definitely in the second camp, Squad had become a pretty arcadey run and gun shooter, largely devoid of any real teamwork or tactical gameplay, essentially just battlefield with no HUD and a stamina bar. Except at this point, Squad also had a rather ridiculous amount of HUD. You could see that a game like this would appeal to a wider audience and be an altogether more commercially viable experience, especially compared to its roots. And when Squad was acquired by Chinese phone game Megacorp Tencent and paid emotes suddenly started appearing in the game, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Squad was on the way to becoming the next Fortnite. But brace yourselves, because Squad's tumultuality was about to raise its weary head. Update 6.0, boom! The infantry combat overhaul. Your gun looks like this now. Whoa! When you get shot at, this happens. <laughs> when you try to shoot someone, it looks like this. What the hell is going on? The squad devs out of nowhere decide they long to return to their roots. They're talking about Project Reality and are overhauling the entire infantry combat system to create a slower paced, teamwork oriented game. And people are furious. Steam reviews are in the dirt. The Reddit is out for blood and YouTube is on fire. Squad devs, for a reason I still don't understand and likely never will, woke up one day and opted to throw away their commercially viable product they've been working on for almost 10 years and replace it with an experience that imitates a 15 year old mod for an even older game that has at best 800 players, most of which are Russians who play the game because it's free and runs on a potato. It is unequivocally the ballsiest of ballsy plays. This isn't like Fortnite going from a horde game to a battle royale because, I mean, what do they have to lose? This is a game that had a stable player base in a genre that is famously niche and mercilessly hard to find players for, just casually uprooting their whole gameplay experience, seemingly to attract a few truly niche Project Reality gamers such as myself. And if that ain't tumultuous, well, I don't know what is. It's no secret that I was a big supporter of this overhaul. You don't have to look too far back on my YouTube channel to figure that out. And with a stable and growing player base, I think it's fair to say that this brave update has found an audience that supports it, which you'd probably argue is a success. But after over six months of playing this update, even with a number of further balance patches that toned down some of the more extreme effects of the overhaul, I find myself somewhat tumultuous. The overhaul at its core was set out to increase teamwork in the game, and in this regard, it has absolutely failed. Although new game mechanics heavily punish solo run and gun players and near enough require squad cooperation to have any semblance of a good round, pulling together a squad of randoms to achieve these lofty ambitions is near enough impossible. The truth is that while the game is ready to create the greatest, most immersive PTSD inducing modern warfare teamwork experience you've ever been a part of, the community at large just isn't. But I think weirdly, the core of this issue lies in the actions of another game developer. 
Battlefield 2042 is the biggest steaming pile of detritus I've ever been a part of. Never have I seen a game launch more soul-crushingly disappointing. A game developer fallen so far from its once lofty heights, or a fan base so completely and utterly displaced from the franchise they once called home. Unfortunately, it's this last point that's caused measurable ripples in the gaming industry. Battlefield 2042 was launched on the 6th of October 2021. By March 2022, squad's player base had more than doubled. Many of these players that hopped in during this time never left. I think squad's continued success, and not to detract from the hard work of the devs too much, sits in part due to the outright failure of modern Battlefield and the complete lack of any competition in the genre. Name one other large-scale approachable shooter in a modern warfare setting. You've got a modern Call of Duty, which you're definitely not playing, you've got a dead Battlefield franchise, or you've got Squad. There really is nothing else. Me and my friends had this exact issue following the launch of 2042. There we all sat, scrolling through our Steam libraries, twiddling our thumbs. There's nothing to play, we'd all endlessly reiterate. Maybe PUBG offers something similar, but it's just not the same. The success of the finals can also be seen in part as a result of the failure of Battlefield. What other shooter offers up large-scale destructive environments? Again, there aren't any. Unfortunately, in Modern Squad, its success, in part, is its greatest weakness. The failure of Battlefield creates a squad filled with players that play the game for different reasons, that ultimately help to ruin the vast majority of rounds you'll play. I'm a Project Reality player. I'm ready to play the game slowly, embed myself in a communicative squad, and do as my squad leader orders. If that means proning in a room staring at a door, then so be it. The majority of squad players seem uninterested in this gameplay and would much rather run around doing their best to shoot as many people as possible, inevitably die, give up instantly, mindlessly drain your tickets by endlessly attacking solo and never defending, lose you the game, and then take to the reddit and tell people how terrible the gun mechanics are. This is compounded by the fact that the experience you have will depend heavily on the server you join. Unfortunately, any server worth joining has a 30-man queue, will take at least half an hour to get in, at which point if you don't get into one of the two good infantry squads created in the first 20 seconds of the round, you might as well go AFK, as the chances of having a good round are close to zero. And if you decide to join a different server, you'll be back in a 30-man queue minimum. Not to mention that the game is full of bugs, is beyond poorly optimized, and seems a bit confused patch to patch on exactly what experience is trying to offer. You can see this confusion in squad's latest sanctioned trailer. Nano doesn't lie. This is a Battlefield trailer for a game that really isn't Battlefield. When you sit down and eat a plate of chips, it can be pretty great to grind a bit of salt on there. Unfortunately, the salt grinder I've just grabbed contains weapon grade uranium. Not ideal. This is the squad problem. There's nothing inherently wrong with a salt grinder. There's nothing wrong with uranium 235. And yet, I'm pissed off because I sat down with the expectation of eating some nice salty chips. And instead, I've walked away with acute radiation poisoning. You can't blame Battlefield players for playing squad wrong. It's what they've been sold. And you can't blame squad players for wanting something more serious than Battlefield. It's what they've been sold. But can you really blame the game? Other than some obvious bugs, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. And this is why I find my opinions on Squad in 2024 to be as tumultuous as the game itself. The game, again and again, offers me glimmers of diamond-like hope. Great rounds that remind me that it really is one of the best team-based shooter experiences in gaming. But to find them, you have to rummage without appropriate PPE, through mountains of metaphorical human waste, with only a loose promise that if you dig deep enough and for long enough, you may once again find the experience of that glorious diamond-like shimmer you once had. Despite Squad's Noodle Armor claim, the foundations of the game have never been stronger. It's the toxic family that live in the Squad house that give me cause for concern. I feel the quality of the game's future will likely rest on the quality of the next battlefield. If DICE can do the impossible rekindle the old magic and find a way to rebuild their player base, they may just save Squad's gameplay experience in the process. That's assuming Squad can survive the Great Grey Zone purge. These things remain to be seen. I give Squad a solid 7 ramens out of 10. There's certainly some noodles about, but I'd hesitate to say it's a bad thing. Thanks for watching, all the best, and I hope to see you in the next one. Airstrike coming in. Get the cover! 
Oh, oh, I was in cover. Alright, just go, go on step. 